first thing we're gonna do is head over to the marina and uh, stretch our legs a little bit. On our way to the marina, we were pulled over by the water police. So we're gonna have to enjoy Atticus <sighs> without leaving Atticus. Desiree and I just got in a relatively big argument. This is hard already. We can't just become enemies all of a sudden. Previously on Project Atticus. After spending three years refitting our fixer-upper sailboat, we left the United States with only $2,000 and the goal of working while we cruised. We made it as far as Isla Mujeres, Mexico before we ran out of money and had to find work. For the next year, we did freelance boat repair jobs until we saved up enough cash to cast the lines and sail south to explore the Western Caribbean. For the past couple months, we've been preparing for our Pacific crossing in Bocas del Toro, Panama. But the coronavirus pandemic, as well as a strict lockdown, has forced us to change our plans and we are currently sitting tight, waiting for the travel restrictions to ease up. You're hungry, bud. I made two monster omelets. Good job, buddy. That looks great. Thanks. Morning acrobatics. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you definitely gotta make some sacrifices to have a cockpit table and a 30-foot catch with a mizzen in the middle of freaking cockpit. Yeah, this is one of our first projects. <laughs> kind of shabby, but does a trick. <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> We've been working so hard just to get Atticus up and ready for the Pacific Crossing. Um, but we've kind of wrapped up a lot of our projects and now there's no Pacific Crossing for another year. <laughs> so we decided to just take a couple of days off and enjoy Atticus out at anchor. I've almost forgotten why we have a boat. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> to, to do projects all the time. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> we just worked our butts off for like seven months and then it's like, and now what? <laughs> so. I think we both just need to reset our brains. Yeah, just appreciate being on Atticus and in a beautiful place. Remind ourselves that this is an awesome lifestyle and that we like doing it, <laughs> you know? <laughs> mm -hmm. So yeah, a couple of days to just try to enjoy ourselves. What's going on there, bud? Uh, dinghy not starting. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, you're kidding. No, I tried. I've been trying for like the last 10 minutes. <laughs> My shoulder's killing me. Would you mind taking a look at it? Yeah, all right. My theory is the core of the problem is actually the gasoline. We filled this tank up five, six months ago and it's just been sitting there. Maybe the gas in the carburetor got real old and like gunked up the carburetor. I'm just gonna take the carburetor off and clean it out. This is the carburetor. This is what I'm gonna remove. Um, in order to do that, I've gotta remove this air intake and this piece, this whole thing comes off.
So I just spilled gas all over the place. <laughs> I, it was really stupid. I, I should have remembered that this isn't sealed if it's upside down. I should have bled the carburetor very first thing. That was stupid. Now it reeks of gas in here. Gotta be real careful about all these tiny little pieces. So I'm just gonna clean this up using a carburetor cleaner. It's just like a sprayable solvent. And I'm just gonna spray it into all these little holes. And, uh... Whoa, uh-oh. You mother With carburetor cleaner, it normally has a lot of pressure and this has just gotten so old that I think it's lost some of its like propellant. To get more carb cleaner, we'd have to go into town and use the dinghy. Desiree just had a good idea to maybe use some compressed air in a can for, you know, like keyboard cleaner. <laughs> at all. Uh, I'm thinking maybe it's just the gas. Maybe we gotta change the gas out, you know? Yeah. It's just not gonna run with it. Mm -hmm. Halos, halos, Atticus. Hey Atticus, hello sir. I was wondering if you guys are planning on heading into town, you know, in the next couple days, and if when you go you might be able to swing by that gas dock with our tank. Yeah, that's no problem. The other thing you should check is if you can see water on the bottom of that tank. Yeah, roger that. I, I'll i have to do it again. I tried yesterday and I didn't see any, but it was, I did kind of late in the day and so maybe I should do it now with, with plenty of light. What do you see? There's definitely some water. Mm -hmm. It's very hard for me to tell because it's so orange in there, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and that tank's seen better days. But yeah, it looks like there could be a significant amount, actually. Mm -hmm. Okay, what's the plan? I'm going to take this fuel hose, and I'm going to take the fittings off, and then I'm going to use this little hand primer pump to pump gas out of this tank and into this tank. Okay. But we're going to take it from the top so that the water will be on the bottom. Mm -hmm. Okay, you ready? Ready. Yeah, it's working. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the water, and then that's the gas. It's a lot of water. Looks water free. Wish me luck. Okay, so I'm gonna go at it one more time here. I was talking with a friend of ours and he was suggesting that potentially there's still a little bit of water in the outboard. And so he was just saying like bleed the fuel pump, bleed the line, and then drain the carburetor again and see how that goes.
that little shit up and running again, we're gonna try to take today and relax. So first thing we're gonna do is head over to the marina and uh, stretch our legs a little bit. On our way to the marina, we were pulled over by the water police and instructed to immediately return to the boat. Ugh, well, we are back on Atticus, another setback. Yeah. <laughs> We've been going to the marina to do yoga and fill up our water when we need to and drop off our trash and laundry. And we've been doing it kind of outside of our predetermined two hours, you know? So guys have certain days they can go into town, girls have certain days they can go into town, and they can only do it for two hours a day based on the last number on your passport. So it's this very like narrow slot of time. Mm -hmm. It kind of sounded like they weren't going to enforce any of the rules between the Anchorage and the marina, but it sounds like now they are, so. Yeah. So we're gonna have to enjoy Atticus without leaving Atticus for a while. So that just we just need to rearrange our mental understanding of what the next couple of weeks is gonna look like. Well, we haven't like gotten off this boat in how many days? We were looking forward to walking. Yeah. You know, just yeah. walking. Mm -hmm. I think we're just like kind of in bad moods, and you know, we just need to take it all in and calm down. Yeah. All right, well, good morning. This is uh, day three of us deciding to try to enjoy ourselves out at anchor. And um, first of all, Desiree and I just got in a relatively big argument. We, we were both doing things to irritate each other unintentionally and I'll be the first to admit I'm terrible at not letting my own internal frustrations turn into like a, a misdirected anger at Desiree. If I'm frustrated I always end up kind of becoming a less enjoyable person to be around. I think that we have cultivated strategies to deal with living on such a small boat, living in, in such a small space. And so we've gotten pretty good at it. Now that we can't utilize those kind of coping strategies like going ashore to exercise, going on long walks, hanging out with other people. Shoot, just spending time away from each other. I don't wanna act as though our situation is really all that unique because at its core it's something that I think everybody is experiencing to some degree or another. But I'll just say that you know I think it's putting a lot of stress on our relationship. So I'm just gonna first of all try not to interact with Desiree for the rest of the day. We both could use our space but I think her in particular you know if, if I could just give her some space for the rest of the day, I think that would go a long way. The second goal that I have for today is to just really try to appreciate just how beautiful it is here. Brownie. Thank you. Got you some milk. Thank you. Can I talk to you for a sec? Obviously, this is a hard situation, and I've been taking this really wrong attitude with me through all of it that, like, if I feel angry and upset toward you, like there must be something legitimate about it. And I'm just realizing that that's just not the case right now. And so I need to take responsibility for those feelings and not punishing you for them. So, I, so I'm really sorry. I appreciate you saying that. I think you really need to recognize like it's because of the situation. Like we are already on a small boat, but you in particular are the kind of person who has so much energy 
and you really need other people and you need to talk and you need to like express yourself. Like, I think it's really important for you to not dump that on me. Yeah. You need to get rid of that energy in yeah. a healthy way. And I, yeah, and I completely agree. I think we've got to kind of sit down and come up with new coping strategies for how we can be okay living on this small boat together and, and give each other the space that we need. Like I was kind of giving myself the excuse that, well, I can't go to the marina so I can't exercise, but like I can swim laps mm -hmm. and I can just exhaust myself and that'll go a long way, mm -hmm. you know? And so what I'm trying to say is that I'm not trying to make excuses, but I'm just trying to say that I think something that'll help me a lot mm -hmm. is starting to realize that this is a unique time, it's a unique situation, and so I need to dedicate a little more thought and energy and time mm -hmm. than I normally would into just keeping myself kind of mentally healthy and, and giving me myself like what I need, you know? And mm -hmm. that is exercise and that's space, you know? And you know, I haven't been like the perfect person to be around either, so I could be more sensitive to the fact that you're an extrovert and I'm an introvert and this is a lot harder for you than it is for me, so. I'll try harder to be more patient and try to not, you know, push disagreements that I don't have to, you know. Okay, buddy. Thank you. Love you. Love you. A part of being human means that sometimes we get wrapped up in the stories that we tell ourselves and lose sight of what's right in front of us. I'm starting to believe that happiness is a choice, not just the place we end up if everything goes our way. It's dealing with discomfort, fear, and uncertainty with grace. It's recognizing just how much we have to be grateful for. It's easier said than done, but it's an ideal worth striving for, especially in times like these. Someone's getting killed, and someone is going to continue living. Is that a threat? I mean, I'm just saying. <laughs> it's on camera. This it's, is my evidence. I'm just saying. <laughs> if I die. I'm just saying someone's going to die. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm not saying it's you. Yeah. I'm not saying it's me. Yeah. I'm just saying someone's going down. Hey, guys. Thanks for watching the episode. We wanted to take a quick second to thank some of our newest patrons. So first of all, we wanted to thank our newest Bosun level patron. So thank you so much, Muriel Weisel. And a big thank you to our Yacht Master patrons. So we've got Robin Mark Dale, Garth Ludwig, Kimo Carlos, Gary and Linda, and Patrick Murray. And a huge thank you to our Deckhand level patrons. We've got Bill Dixie, Rob Cruz, Gary Walker, Dave Rattan, Katherine Hackett, David Pfeiffer, and Mark Wiley, D.B. Shafto. We've also got Wendy and Frankie from Sarasota, Florida, Scott Schrager, Gwen Soto, Sherry Tears, Gabriel Rouser, John Powell, Jay Smith, and Brent and Jesse Nelson. You guys are amazing. Thank you so much for supporting our videos, and we'll catch you next week.